TheDailyMass.com. Experience the Roman Catholic Mass from historic St. Louis Cathedral every day on TheDailyMass.com. His love anywhere in the world. Good evening, I'm Sarah McDonald. And I'm Jason Angelette. Welcome to Issues in Faith. Well, this is going to be our last episode of Lent 2014 because we will be entering Holy Week um, next week, starting with Palm Sunday on Sunday. And obviously on Thursday night, our, our normal airing will be Holy Thursday. So we'll be airing Mass live from St. Louis Cathedral. I'll tell you, I don't know about you, but Lent for me just has flown by. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm realizing that there's still some things I wanted to do in Lent mm -hmm. that I have a short period of time before I can get that spiritual journey walk that I yeah. wanted to make happen. I was saying the other day too, it, it seemed like when I was a child, Lent lasted forever. Yes, yes. And now that I'm an adult, it, it does yes. seem that it has gone so It's like quickly. that in Christmas. It took forever for Christmas to come and then now as, a, er, and then now as an adult, it feels like it's like, it's all right, mm -hmm. we're here. And so as I, as I mentioned, we'll have this open Holy Week on Palm Sunday. A little later in the show, we're gonna talk to um, some reps from Catholic TV who will talk about their programming on our on 32.3 WLE's mm -hmm. sister digital station. Um, but we will be actually televising many of our celebrations here locally live on WLE as well. Yeah, definitely. I encourage people to take advantage of that opportunity to, to look on the schedule to DVR it because mm -hmm. you know great opportunity to DVR things um, and to see what it looks like. I mean, there, we're going to be in so many different places uh, that we'll, we'll be journeyed through with the uh, the programming. And so just to take a look and see what the church is doing and, and it's just, it's beautiful. Yeah, and, and obviously everyone knows we, we air Mass live from St. Louis Cathedral, 11 o'clock every Sunday. Um, Archbishop Amon will celebrate Palm Sunday Mass live um, at 11 a.m. on Sunday. And um, as a bit of a, a surprise, I guess an, an early Easter present for our viewers, we will be actually going live with brand new HD cameras. Yes. Um, for this Holy Week. It's a Praise big announcement. We're, yeah. we're breaking the news here on, on issues in faith, but we will have brand new HD cameras, new angles. It'll be a much better viewing experience and also a much better listening experience mm -hmm. from St. Louis Cathedral beginning on Sunday. Oh, we, we're very excited about that. I mean, it's something that we've been talking about for a while and, and uh, it's, it's happening and praise God and, and thank you, Archbishop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is very exciting. It's something that we've been also working for and it'll, it's perfect timing, mm -hmm. you know, to look at Holy Week as, as this awesome opportunity for evangelization within the church um, to have to use new technology mm -hmm. um, to show the church off in the best way possible. And St. Louis Cathedral is gorgeous. Oh, yeah. um, and I would highly encourage everyone to actually go to your yeah. <laughs> Holy Week services and to attend Mass. But there are those who can't, who, who can't, can't, who they are can take advantage that's of. That's right. Yeah. And those, um, you know, who may find themselves with younger children who might not, you know, going to Mass at seven o'clock on a Thursday night for Holy Thursday might not be in the cards because you might be or maybe you bring all the kids and you don't hear everything and right. you want to hear what was going on, then That's you could have right. recorded it. <laughs> right. So you, you want to um, take advantage of the, the opportunities. But we will um, air Palm Sunday Mass yeah. at, at 10 a.m. On mm -hmm. Tuesday, we will air the Chrism Mass, at which the Archbishop will also open the Ninth General Synod of the Archdiocese of New Orleans, which is very exciting and very historic. And wow. we'll have a lot more information about that when we come back from Easter. And then, as we mentioned, Holy Thursday Mass live at 7 o'clock from the cathedral. Good Friday services, three o'clock on Friday, and then we will be airing, obviously, Easter Sunday Mass at 11 a.m. There's so many wonderful opportunities and definitely encourage everybody to, to take advantage of it. Uh, the, the Chrism Mass, the uh, Holy Thursday, uh, Good Friday, um, to, be, to dive deeper mm -hmm. and to let this Holy Week really just kind of um, uh, bless you. And please share that information with those yeah. who, who are sick and shut and who can't make it to Mass for whatever reason or services for whatever reason that know this ministry is there exactly. to serve them. Mary of Nazareth is an epic new motion picture on the life of Mary, the mother of Christ, from her childhood through the resurrection of Jesus. Pope Ben XVI had the opportunity to screen this film in the Apostolic Palace and was touched by the portrayal of Mary so movingly revealed on film. Here in New Orleans, we'll have the opportunity to see the film on April 28th at AMC West Bank Palace Theater. For more information, call Tori at 504-237-2962. And here's a look at the trailer.
think that the Messiah, the new king of Israel, could be born here? Greetings, Elizabeth. Mary, may you be blessed among all women. He spoke to me too. The angel in a dream. He told me, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. They said the one who is about to be born. They say they have seen the stars. There's already talk that the wise men left because they found what they were looking for. The king of the Judeans. I'm the king of the Judeans! Your son will mean the ruin of men. God will cast a shadow over you. Those were the words the angel said. He will be king for a reign without end. The son of man will suffer. He will be killed. Nothing is impossible for him. The thoughts of all hearts will be revealed. Nothing is impossible for God. Mother, rejoice and be happy. of them. Whatever it is, they'll be prepared to answer. Because in a safe and disciplined environment, Louisiana Catholic schools shape tomorrow's leaders. Catholic students are rising. 99% graduate. Almost all go to college. They'll earn higher wages, be community involved, more tolerant of diverse views. And the world will be better because of them. Louisiana Catholic schools in a class of their own. You're watching WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. Find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. At Woman's New Life Center, reproductive health care is about more than the body. It's also about the soul. WNLC's newest program, Hope Fertility Care Center, provides effective, morally acceptable ways to plan a family, monitor fertility, and assess gynecologic health. For more information about the Woman's New Life Center, call 504-831-3117 or visit womansnewlife.com. You're watching WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. Find us on Cox Channel 14, Charter Channel 11 and 711, AT&T Channel 32 and 1032, Dish TV, Direct TV, and over-the-air broadcast on Channel 32. watch TV in New Orleans using a digital antenna, then you've probably found Catholic TV on WLAE 32.3. Joining us tonight to talk about television evangelization and Catholic TV's plans for Holy Week and the coverage of the canonizations of Pope John the 23rd and Pope John Paul II is Bonnie Rogers of Catholic TV. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks so much for having me, Sarah. I appreciate it. Well, first of all, I want to thank you, obviously, for the partnership that Catholic TV and WLAE have. Issues in Faith um, is one of the programs that you've picked up over the, over the past couple of years. And now that we have Catholic TV full time, it's very exciting. It is, it's been a wonderful partnership. The folks of New Orleans have always been so supportive of Catholic media in general, and certainly WLAE through your partnership. It's just been a, a tremendous blessing. Well, good. Well, we know, obviously, this is a very busy time for the church. We're preparing for um, Holy Week, the holiest week of the year, and, and such 
amazing graces that come through this week, but also for the next weekend, the, the canonizations. And so tell us a little bit in, in a nutshell, because there's so much going on with you guys, what you were planning, um, first of all, for Holy Week on Catholic TV. Sure. Well, of course, as you mentioned, you know, Holy Week is certainly our most grace-filled time of the year and many solemn liturgies, but certainly with that anticipation for uh, that Easter joy and that return of the Alleluia. So Holy Week, of course, uh, will begin for us with the Palm Sunday celebrations from the Vatican. Uh, and then we have a beautiful Mass from the University of Notre Dame that will air on Palm Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, so Palm Sunday really ushers in that week with uh, great solemnity and just beautiful processions in, a, in some of the most beautiful churches in the world, that's for sure. Yes. The San Antonio um, Cathedral, that, that's a beautiful Hispanic Mass that, you know, just overflowing with on Palm Sunday, just beautiful. And it really is um, exciting as a Catholic, and, and obviously I am a Catholic who goes to Mass every Sunday, and as we would hope that all Catholics do, but to see how many people do come together for the celebrations of Holy Week, it's an awesome opportunity for evangelization. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, people know on Ash Wednesday to get into a church, whether they're regular, you know, mass goers or not, and then certainly for both Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, people return uh, just, just for that um, connection back to their faith life, and you hope that that really seeps into their hearts and brings them back each and every week, as, as you said, Sarah. And that um, is also what you're trying to do, what we're trying to do here on Issues in Faith, but also what you're trying to do um, through Catholic TV every day. I'm always touched by the responses that we get, and I'm sure you get these, you know, all the time as reaction to news on Issues in Faith. It's, you know, people who have removed themselves from the church for one reason or another still want to remain connected to that community. And so you might hear a response from them, and I'm most touched by it in relation to the Mass and to the Rosary. You know, people will often say, I never miss the Mass on my iPod, or I never miss the Mass. I check in online and watch it, you know, at some time in the morning. Mm -hmm. So the Mass, you know, the liturgy, you know, just really resonates with each one of us. Uh, and, and especially for those who have distanced themselves. So it's a great opportunity to welcome people back in in a very comfortable way because they're watching maybe from their own device or in their own living room or kitchen, what have you, but somehow we're making the opportunity to be a presence in their lives. It's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful opportunity. And with the hope that that will touch them and spark that interest into, into getting back into church and, and getting um, back active into the, in their parish and in their faith life. And I have found, and, and I want to get back to Holy Week with you all in a second, but I have found that the programming on Catholic TV is is very uplifting. It's very modern um, it's in terms of how it's presented. And it does have something for everyone from, from the children to parents, the elderly. I mean, the, the programming runs the gamut of people you're trying to reach out to. And, and the programming also um, speaks about the faith from a, obviously a very strong theological background, but in a way that people can understand. Absolutely, we all have to have the message touch our hearts in a way that we can be open to. And we work really hard to make sure that we have something that is going to appeal to a very diverse group. So you mentioned our kids game show, uh, and we're really excited about that, particularly in light of the canonizations, mm -hmm. because the topic for that week, uh, our wonderful scheduler, Becky Damon, scheduled the topic to be about the Pope. Awesome. So everybody's gonna get involved in this joyous time uh, for Divine Mercy Sunday when we canonize the, our two beloved popes. Well, great, and, and so get me, uh, let's go through the Easter Triduum. Um, sure. What will, we, what, are you, what will you be televising for the Triduum services? We'll be televising all of the um, liturgies from the Vatican, and then from our own cathedral here in Boston, the Cathedral of the Holy Cross. So that will start on Tuesday. Our Chrism Mass takes place on Tuesday of mm -hmm. Holy Week, uh, and that will be live at 11 a.m. Eastern and rebroadcast that evening at 8. Uh, and then we'll be having the Stations of the Cross every day. We'll be having the Stations of the Cross from the Vatican as well as from our cathedral. 
and then some that we've done from our own chapel here at Catholic TV. Uh, so we have something every day of Holy Week for you know a unique liturgy, and then of course anything that we can televise from the Vatican will, will in fact be televised. Sure. So we've got a lot planned. That's very exciting, and people do obviously love Pope Francis, and so being able to be part of um, really seeing the global church come together at the Vatican is always inspiring for people. Uh, that's so certainly true, and you know I think people um, have felt really welcomed by his very genuine hospitality and by his respectful um, encounters with Pope Emeritus Benedict Definitely. Uh, and uh, his inclusion of, of Benedict in so many uh, aspects of our, our ongoing uh, liturgies and seasons. Well, and Bonnie, as we talked about earlier, um, the next weekend, Divine Mercy Sunday, will be the canonizations, and then whole next week, we've had this beautiful celebration of Holy Week, you will have a whole week's worth of special programming about leading up to the canonizations, about the lives of our two beloved popes. Absolutely. We're, we're doing a couple of unique things for the canonizations. We've been featuring a block called uh, Women in the Church, and all of the documentaries that are featured are women who were canonized by either John Paul II or John the Twenty-Third. So uh, in our women's block, that you'll see a feature on that uh, every day uh, during the, we're calling it Canonization Week now. Uh, but it's really important because both these beloved popes, John Paul and uh, John the Twenty-Third, are familiar to so many because mm -hmm. of, number one, their unlikely um, impact that they had. You know, no one ever expected John the Twenty-Third to be so instrumental right. in calling a Vatican Council, and certainly John Paul with uh, his uh, pontificate that impacted so many, and now celebrating 35 years of theology of the body just that, that he initiated for us to elevate our dignity. So during Canonization Week, uh, we'll feature some specials on John Paul II, the man, the Pope, and his message. Um, we have some great uh, features from Net TV in New York on Vatican Council II to honor John the 23rd, and we'll have a, a special from Salt and Light TV in Canada that will be airing uh, a beautiful piece um, and then a Be Not Afraid, a tribute to John Paul II uh, that was footage from his um, funeral. Very good. And you will obviously be um, broadcasting the, uh, the canonization masses and the ceremonies that go along with that. You mentioned three times. And we'll also be um, broadcasting them here on WLE Channel 32, not 32.3. Tell us those times, um, Bonnie, that you'll be Sure. The canonizations are going to air live at 4 a.m. <laughs> for our early birth. <laughs> 11 a.m. and then 8 p.m. Uh, all Eastern times uh, on the actual day of the canonization. It's Divine Mercy Sunday. Very good. Well, Bonnie, thank you so much for all that you do um, with the Ministry of Catholic TV. It is definitely touching the lives of people um, throughout, you know, definitely past Boston and Waterton into New Orleans and beyond. So we're very grateful for our partnership. And like we um, said on the onset, if there's anything we can do to, to help with your mission of evangelization and ministry, we're always here to help you. Thanks so much, Sarah. You're a delight. We appreciate so much the ministry of WLAE. Thanks. Well, for more information about Catholic TV's programming or to watch live, go to www.catholictv.org. And we'll be right back. We're local and enlightening. WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. The grief and loss resulting from an abortion can be overwhelming. Many women and men need a safe place to heal. The Woman's New Life Center is that place. We treat each woman and man with the utmost respect and dignity. We offer individual counseling and referrals to post-abortion retreats that offer a psychological and spiritual approach to healing. Call 504-831-3117 or visit womansnewlife.com. You're watching WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. Find us on Cox Channel 14, Charter Channel 11 and 711, AT&T Channel 32 and 1032, Dish TV, DirecTV, 
and over-the-air broadcast on Channel 32. It's happening in schools and schoolyards. A timeless tradition is rekindled with every new class in every new face. In Louisiana Catholic schools, learning goes beyond textbooks and testing. Students are embracing faith, values, leadership skills, and of course, a classic history of academic excellence. Invest in success. Louisiana Catholic Schools, a class of their own. We're local and educational. WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. As we move into Holy Week, remembering the sacrifice and celebrating the resurrection of our Lord, we wanted to take you inside one of the beautiful churches in the Archdiocese, one where people often have difficulty finding the Stations of the Cross, although they are in full view. Janet Gross has the story of Immaculate Conception Jesuit Church. Built in the 1850s, right in the heart of downtown New Orleans, Immaculate Conception, or the Jesuit Church as many call it, has a history few churches can claim. It was built twice, using the original design and the original materials. In 1928, a, a tragedy, a catastrophe of sorts happened when a building was being constructed next door. And in the use of dynamite to drive in piles and the foundations of this church were cracked. So within just a week or so, the church was shut down and um, taken apart, like a big jigsaw puzzle. The whole thing was taken down. And then lovingly, painstakingly, put back together. It's a resurrection story of sorts. If you looked at a photograph of the church in 1925, for example, you would look at it and say it's the same church because the windows and the pews and these pillars, which are cast iron, all are from the original building. The Jesuit priest who designed the church admired the Moorish churches he'd seen in Spain and so he made sure the different cultures were reflected in construction with Islamic architecture, arches and domes, the repeated image of the Star of David, alongside the many traditional Catholic symbols. A number of times I've had visitors come in and, and um, ask me like, well, Father, why don't you have any stations? It's a very beautiful church, but you don't have any stations. We do have stations. Uh, we have special stations because unlike most churches, we have 18 rather than 14. Located above the first level stained glass windows, the stations themselves are stained glass. In addition to the traditional 14 that begin with the condemnation of Jesus and conclude with Jesus' burial, we have agony in the garden and crowning with thorns at the beginning, and we have the resurrection and the ascension at the end. And a careful observer will notice something else. Well, there's a little bit of a quirk, and I wish I knew why it happened, but I mentioned that the stations in this church begin with the agony of the garden and the crowning of thorns, and you would expect it all to be chronological in terms of the arrangement, as are the rest of the stations. But in fact, those two are reversed in, in this church. So the crowning of thorns is the first one, and the agony in the garden is the second one. Doesn't make any sense chronologically, but I think out of respect for the fact that that's the way they were originally installed, we've never tried to change them. They work to keep tradition and history in place here from the gigantic 1,500 pound bronze doors to the original cast iron pews, each containing symbols of names given to Mary over the centuries. They're cast iron, uh, wooden benches. It sounds very uncomfortable, but I think as a matter of fact, we welcome people to try them out because I think they find them very comfortable. An invitation to come sit and come see, but mostly to come worship in this beautiful place where for more than a century and a half, the faithful have come to give glory to God. I'm Janet Gross for Issues and Faith. As you can imagine, Immaculate Conception Jesuit Church is a popular wedding and tourist choice, but still the church holds on to its sense of being a parish with daily confessions, outreach, and hospitality. If you have a question for us or have an idea for a story you'd like to see on air, please write to us at Issues and Faith. 3330 North Causeway Boulevard, Suite 345, Metairie, Louisiana, 70002, or email us at questions at wlae.com. Plus, if you miss an episode, you can catch up online at www.archdiocese-no.org. 
And that's our program for this evening. For all of us at Issues of Faith, thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. Hope you join us again soon. Until then, God bless.